Welcome back to P2. Today we're looking at sketching gradient functions, unit 7.3. Now, I'm going to try and make this a short video today. This isn't something that I've seen come up very often, but it is something that is on the syllabus, so you do need to be aware of it. Let's do a quick sketch of a cubic. Let's come up. Now the cubic I'm going to use today is just a one that's just got nice values for us to look at. Just to make our life a little bit easier. So it's crossing there at 4 and that is a maximum value there. It's touching the axis at 2, which is one of its local minimums. And then it's crossing here at negative 1. Now for us to do the gradient function... Okay, what we want to do is we want to look at each kind of section of the graph and what's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this sketch kind of underneath so we can see what's happening. Now, at a minimum or maximum point, the gradient is zero, isn't it? These two gradients here is zero. That means... For my gradient function is going to hit the axes because it's going to be the value zero so you can see that that will go directly down to zero as will this one next if i look between these two points this is a negative gradient and a negative gradient is going to be below my graph below my axes so I just want to draw it like a U shape. Okay, because I'm drawing it below the axis, but obviously it's got to come back up to hit this line. So draw it as a nice little U shape. Now, if I look after this point now, we've got a positive axis. Yeah, it's increasing as I'm going from left to right. So it's a positive axis. And a positive axis is drawn above our X axis. So above our horizontal line. And then my final section is to the left of this turning point. Now remember, when we're looking at this, we're looking from left to right. So looking left to right, this is increasing, isn't it? So it is a positive axis, uh, sorry, a positive gradient. And a positive gradient would be for the function above the line. And this is what I've ended up with. So this was my y equals f of x, and this has become my y equals f dash of x, as it's been where I've differentiated. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit more information just to show you. So this one is actually y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. That's what this graph is. Nicely drawn there. Now, if I think about differentiating that, I get 3x squared minus 6x. Okay, and if I think then, this is obviously an x squared graph, but if I factorise, I can take 3x out, and that will leave me with x minus 2 inside. So I can see at, you know, when dy by dx here is 0, we can see that 3x equals 0 or x equals 0. x minus 2 equals 0 or x equals 2. So I can actually see, you know, these are my turning points from my original graph, my minimum and maximum, and they are the roots of this one for my differential. Okay? And you can see here, it is what we'd expect. You know, it's an x squared graph. This is what we're getting, an x squared graph. Okay, so just by differentiating it, if you know what it was, you could then, and as we've done in this case, see it in a different light. But this is what you kind of just got to be able to do, you know, where you've got a zero gradient, they're going to hit the axes, where you've got a positive gradient, it's above the line, so that's here and here, and where you've got a negative gradient, it is below the line. Okay, so that's hopefully helped you out with this. Positive gradient above the line, negative gradient below the line, positive gradient above the line. 
and it's just then about getting the shape the same. You know, this you should know as a cubic, you expect in a quadratic, and that is what we can see. So, second example, hopefully not too difficult. This time we've got an asymptote in here. So anything with a horizontal asymptote means that that asymptote is along the x-axis. And then we're just going to look at what's happening. Well, we've got a positive gradient, haven't we? So without positive gradient, that means it's got to be above the line. And if I think about, again, think about these things logically, this is a steeper gradient, larger value. This is a shallower gradient, smaller value. So that is why my graph starts at the larger value and heads down to the smaller values and towards our asymptote. Okay, and the idea is that the reason this happens is that this is heading towards this horizontal asymptote. So it's heading towards a gradient of zero, but zero, but never actually gets there, which is why this is the way it is. It's heading towards a gradient of zero, but never actually gets there. It's getting a smaller and smaller gradient each time. OK, so all you need to do is just think these through. They're not too difficult. You just need to think them through. OK, just going to give you a couple of these to do and then put the answers at the end. But again, like I said, I'm trying to keep this one short, so maybe I should stop talking. <laughs>